What is up, everybody? Welcome back to 9to5Gamers. Today is Top 10 Tuesday, and we are talking about holiday games. Uh, today is Halloween. We've got Thanksgiving. we got Christmas. we got Kwanzaa. There are a lot of different holidays coming up, and this is the holiday season. And so with that, there's going to be a lot of family gatherings. And so I wanted to make a list of games that I think are just really good to bring to family gatherings. What does that mean? It means I need a game that's going to play with a decent amount of people. I don't know about you guys. i got a pretty big family. And so like, uh, and I know that not everybody at the family gathering is going to play, but for the most part, you can always get a good chunk of people up to like maybe eight people um, to play some games and sometimes if the games are easy enough you can set up a game in one area and start a game with other people in another and so these games are games that cater to that that are easy to play really fun a lot of it's social interaction with one another and uh, they just make great games for parties and so as you are gathering for the holidays consider some of these games to add to your list and uh, a lot of them can be found really really easily they can be find uh, found at Amazon they can be found at Target and Walmart and stuff like that they're easy to get to because sometimes it's tough to get out and find like a nice game store I know some people struggle finding game stores in their area so these are games you could probably just get just about anywhere um, shouldn't be too too difficult depends where you live obviously but with that said let's go ahead and get into the top 10 my number 10 which is sitting right over here tiny little card game called taco cat goat cheese pizza get used to saying that because you're gonna be saying a lot during this game it's a really fun party game you can just play this with basically as many people as you want that could fit around the table um, it doesn't have a recommended player count I think it says eight but that's still a lot I think eight is like that maximum player count that I'm going for um, but yeah so basically you're going to be flipping cards you have a stack of cards face down you flip one face up and you say the phrase taco and then the next person plays a card and says cat. And you keep doing that until what you say matches with what you played. And so the card needs to match what you said. And if it does, you throw your hand in the center. Everybody has to pile their hands into this one big stack. And whoever is the last person to do it has to take the entire stack of cards, put it into theirs, and then shuffle it. Or they put it on the bottom, I guess. Um, and then uh, that's it. Last person or the person who gets rid of all of their cards and then is first to lay their hand down during this uh, during the game is uh, the winner. It's a really fun game and it's really fun to just play with a, a big group of people and everybody's just having a great time slapping their hands down. And one of the fun parts too is like what if you're not like dexterous like what if you're not like really good when it comes to what's the word I'm looking for here what if you're not really like coordinated and you're not very good at the game it's still really funny because you end up just taking a ton of cards and everybody's just having a, a great laugh and even those people eventually will their reaction timing starts to speed up and they start getting better at the game um, I had a friend who he was just terrible at the game but he ended up winning uh, a game eventually and he was super excited when he finally won he's like I finally won so taco cat go cheese pizza is a solid game to bring around the holidays my number nine is a game called sheriff of nottingham this is a game that i recently played and i loved it so much i went out and bought a copy got this copy for about 16 bucks they had it on sale at like target they had like buy one get one 50 off and they had another sale and it was really awesome so i went ahead and picked it up because this game is phenomenal basically everybody is playing um as a, a person in nottingham and you're trying to smuggle goods in and so like um, every good is worth a certain amount of points and so you take all the you have a handful of cards and you're trying to put them inside this little pouch and um, after you put cards inside the pouch you're gonna give it to the sheriff of Nottingham whichever player is pl uh, playing as the sheriff that turn and they have to determine if they're if you're lying or not so you might say I got three cheeses in my pouch now you can't lie about how many cards are in the pouch you have to be honest with that but you can lie about what's in there because you may want to smuggle some things like a crossbow or something which will get you more points um, but then if the sheriff decides to let you pass he'll give it to you and then you collect all of the uh, points off of those things and if he says you're lying he'll open up the pouch and if he caught you lying you have to pay him for all the contraband items um, and the amount of the items or if he thinks you're lying and then tries to prove it by opening your pouch and he was wrong then they have to he has to pay you coins so it's a really fun game and then the sheriff player rotates throughout the game i love sheriff of nottingham man it's, a, it's been it's a great party game for a reason and i think this is a really solid game uh to bring for the holidays 
My number eight is a game called Dixit. Um, Dixit, it plays three to eight players, and it's a really good game. And the reason I like this one, too, is because um, I'm part of a Hispanic family, and so sometimes there are people who might be a part of the family that don't speak English. With Dixit, there's no words that you need to know. Um, everybody is going to be playing um, language independent, right? Like, I like games that are like that, where you don't necessarily need to speak the same language for everybody to play. And Dixit is all about pictures and interpreting pictures, and so a person will be the storyteller and and they'll say a word and put their card face down then everybody will draw take a card from their hand that matches that word and put it into the pile you shuffle it up lay them out for everybody to look at and then everybody has to pick the storyteller's picture and so everybody votes on which picture they think is the storytellers whoever got it right is uh gets points and stuff like that and so um, whoever um, got their picture voted for gets some points as well and you're just trying to race to get to 30 points super fun super easy it's just a game full of like cards with weird pictures on it that everybody tries to guess and so it's a really really fun game and they have a new Disney version if your family loves Disney um, I recommend picking that one up too really cool my number seven is a game called Bonanza and it's fun because it plays with seven players um, up to seven and um, this is a really really interesting game it's it's pro somebody asked the other day on on a, a Facebook group they were like best game with the worst theme and I said ooh I win <laughs> Bonanza made by Uwe Rosenberg theme beans because it's literally the most uninteresting theme i have ever seen you have anthropomorphic beans and as bad as the game looks it's so deceptively good like it's you have two bean stalks that you're planting and you can plant two different types of beans in there and then um your hand is in a specific order so like instead of taking your hand and shuffling it up or rearranging your cards you can't rearrange they're kind of just in the order you get them in and so Every time it gets back to your turn, you have to lay down one card or plant one bean from your hand, the top card. And if the top card matches the two bean stocks, then you just plant, you put it into that bean stock and continue to grow them. And the more of them you get, more points you'll get from selling it. But if for some reason the top card doesn't match either of the two beans that you have planted, then you'll have to sell a stock, um, uh, your beans, for whatever points you're going to get from it. And then after that, plant the new one. Um, and so the way that you do that is by whenever it's somebody else's turn, it's like, oh snap, the next card in my hand, I'm not going to be able to plant, but the one behind it, I will. So let me just see if somebody wants to trade for this. So you might, somebody might say, hey, I've got, um, I'm looking for green beans. Oh, that's the card I have. I'll give you a green bean for a blue bean. Okay, cool. And then you guys trade, you plant that card. And it's awesome. And any cards that you receive in trade, you can't put them in your hand. They go straight onto one of the two stacks. So you can trade, you can just give stuff to people because you just want to get rid of it, but then you're giving them free points. It's such a fun game and it's, it says 45 minutes on the box, but it never feels that long. It always feels like it's less than that and it's just so much fun. I really enjoy it. And the more people you play with, the better because the better you get for those trades and different things like that. And the deck will run out a lot quicker too. So it's kind of interesting the way that that works. But yeah, that's it for Bonanza. I think it's a great game and I think you guys should play it. So that's my number seven. My number six is a game called Telestrations. Now, I highly recommend if you're gonna buy Telestrations, buy this copy. This is the 12 player party pack. Um, they do have like a six player kit at, um, at Target and you may be tempted to go, oh, well if it play this one plays with 12, can't I just buy two six player packs? That will not work. Um, because all of those pads are only going to have six pages. All of these pads have 12 pages each. So what will happen is you'll have six pages. Everybody will have, sure, everybody will have a pad, but the problem is that when they pass it, it'll get halfway around the circle before uh, you know um, anybody else gets to draw in it. So basically the way this game works, it's like telephone. It's just, you know how you whisper something in somebody's ear and then they whisper and they whisper and they whisper to the next person around in a circle and then when it gets back to you, it's a completely different message. It's like that, but with drawing. And so one player, will, you will write a word, that's your secret word, then you'll hand it to the next player, then they have to see your word, then they have to draw a picture of it. Then they pass it to the next player. They look at the picture, flip the page and then guess what it is. And then the, by the time it gets to the end, it's something completely different. You know, you started off with cookie, ended up with the moon, and it, it just ends up being really, really fun to see 
how it's like how did you even get there and then it, if you're clever enough you can kind of backtrack and be like i know that handwriting you messed it up and it's just so much fun um and playing with 12 players is not crazy it doesn't take like six hours to play it's pretty pretty quick because you got a little timer and it does have a timer you don't have to use it but if you do use it it kind of puts the pressure on people to finish their drawings quickly so that it doesn't take an hour to play it but telestrations Phenomenal. Get the 12 player party pack. It plays with up to 12 people. Um, you don't have to play with all 12. You can play with less, but it's good to have extra pages just in case you have that bigger party size. I highly recommend this game. If you know that your party size is never going to be above six, just get the six player party pack from Target. Super cheap, super fun. And if you're into, uh, you know, being naughty with it, I think they have like a, a nighttime, a dark, what is that one called? Uh, the 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 at night version that's like adult themed that's up to you i don't know if it, it just depends on your player group but yeah telestrations really really fun game highly recommend that one my number five is a game called green team wins and this got a lot of buzz i think like last year and then i found it at books a million and um I, when i found a copy of it i was like hey i heard everybody was talking about this it is a great game so the way that the game works it's called green team wins because um there's two teams you can be on the orange team and the green team if you're on the green team you score points if you're on the orange team you get no points and so the goal of the game is you're going to flip a question card over which could be a this or that best of three they have fill in the blanks and so sometimes those fill in the blanks are just hilarious because it's like michael blank right and then everybody has a little pad and they have to write down what's the what what word do they think everybody else is going to say cuz you might be tempted when you play this at first to go michael blank oh obviously it's michael jackson right and then you you write it down and you flip the card over and then you don't even think about what everybody else is going to say and then everybody flips over their cards and everybody wrote michael scott from the office and you're like Michael Scott, why wouldn't nobody write Michael Jackson? Then you, because you got it wrong, you're not in the majority, you have to erase it and flip over to the orange team and now you score no points. While everybody else flips over to the green team and they get to score points. And then you score double points if you stay on the green team. It's such an easy game to play. It's not complicated. It's not hard to explain. And um, it creates some hilarious conversations where you know like space blank right or um, um, whenever they did space blank um, I, I thought it was I, I put space jam but I was like I feel like there's at least four people here who would write space jam so I'm gonna write space jam and then nobody wrote space jam I was the only one and I felt so silly and I was like man I thought for sure and I'm trying to think like how everybody would think and sometimes that helps out and that's how you score more points is thinking like the crowd so green team wins excellent excellent game that you can use for the holidays highly recommend it my number four is a game called skull king and this is a really fun game that you can play you can pick it up at target it's very easy to find it is a trick-taking game a lot of times family members have played a game like spades or if you're if you have hispanic family just tell them it's like Brica. Um, Brica is um, like a card game in Puerto Rico that some people have played, and I don't know if they play it in other uh, uh, Spanish countries and probably butchered uh, saying it there. But but it that game um, is a lot like that. It's a trick-taking game. And so you could tell them, hey, have you ever played Spades? Trick-taking. They, they, once they understand, oh, trick-taking, yeah. So somebody puts down a card, and then everybody has to play that suit. And if you don't play that suit, you'd lose that hand. It's like, yeah, so we're going to do that, but we bet on it right and then you teach them the yo ho ho chant and so skulking is just like that it's just got um four different uh, suits of cards they're just by color green purple and yellow then they've got the fourth suit which is the black suit and that's the pirate suit and those suits um trump that's the trump suit it beats all other suits then after that you got some special cards like pirates the skull king and mermaids you explain what they do and who wins it's like rock paper scissors and that's it and then it's just about trick taking and then what you do though that's really fun is that you bet how many tricks you're going to take so it's like i think i'm going to win three tricks and so you're like all right i'm going to win my three and so you win your two and then you win your third and you're like i won my third and then you play a really bad card and you're like there's no way i lose this because it's obviously it's a four nobody there's somebody who's going to have something higher and then all of a sudden everybody plays three two one and you're like you won 
on a four and it's like dang it because if you predict wrong you you can't you don't get any points you actually lose points and so uh, you bet on how many cards you'll be able to play you could bet on getting zero and get a lot of points later on in the game which is really fun but this game is phenomenal i love skull king i've introduced it to so much of my family they got it down packed they knew how to play it they understood the game and they love playing it and and a few of them bought a copy for themselves and it comes with a recipe for a pie this is probably the fourth or fifth time I've said that because I know that a Skull King has appeared in so many lists and I always tell people, there's, 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 a, there's a pie. There's a recipe for a pie in here. I don't know if it's any good because I didn't even use it, but still, it's pretty cool. My number three game on the list is Fun Facts. Fun Facts is, I, I thought it was going to be like, okay, like, because it got nominated for like Spiel, uh, for the Spiel DRs, and I was like, eh. I don't know, man. For me, lately, I feel like Spiel de Yars winners have been super mid. Like, I don't feel like they're the best games ever. I've I've been like so disappointed by Spiel de Yars winners, and it's like, oh yeah, Dorf Romantic and 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 Cascadia and all this stuff. And I'm like, are these games good or is it like it was nominated? It didn't win, but I was like, this got nominated. So let me try it. It's a party game. It's a game I can bring over for the holidays. Let me try it out. And man, I played this with a group of strangers and we had a great time. I played this with a, a group of people who knew me very well and we had a great time. Like it doesn't even matter who you play with. And the fun part about it is that the way it works is that everybody gets this little arrow and you write your name on one side and then on the other side, you're gonna write the answers to the questions that are proposed to you. And so um, one of the questions might say something like, hey, how much do, on a scale from one to 100 or zero to 100, how much do you like your haircut right now? Then everybody writes a number from zero to 100 and they put it face down and then it, all you see is their name. And so the first person puts their little arrow out and then the next person goes, I'm gonna put my arrow it's either going to go on top of his arrow or below. If it's on top, it means I like my haircut more. If it's below, it means I like my haircut less. Hmm, Jeremy. I don't know, man. I don't feel like Jeremy really cares about his hair that much. So I'm assuming he's going to go down to a 0%. And then somebody will be like, I'm above. And then so like and, and then they're, they're trying to figure this thing out and you're trying to rationalize and reason around the table and everybody's just kind of looking at each other trying to figure it out and then after that you start flipping over the tiles and then so one by one you start going zero percent you were right jeremy doesn't care about his hair as it's pretty obvious right and then the next person's like ten percent then the next person's like six percent you're like six percent then you got to take that one out because they got it wrong then the next one has to be above ten percent then it's like twenty percent then it's seventy percent then it's forty and then you got to take the forty out and it's just you score points and you're all working together it's cooperative it's really really fun it, i thought the little mechanic with the the arrows and trying to and the cool thing is whenever you put your arrow you can like slide the arrows up and put it in between two other people and it's like maybe more than her but not as much as him maybe more than him but not as much as her like those reasoning is it's just really really fun and the questions are fun too and uh there's no there's no real questions in there that are really awkward some of them can be i've seen that but you could literally just take those out um i think that was like how many romantic partners have you had and it's like why would i ask this to to kids you know what i mean that are like in you know in middle school or whatever that's that's an awkward question to ask um just depends on the player group so anyways that's fun facts very good game, you guys should check it out. The next game on my list is my number two and it is The Chameleon. Um, I bought this game probably uh, at the very beginning of when I first started playing board games. Like this was like, I this was when I was like, oh, board games, Target, they have a whole bunch. Let me buy games from Target. That's all, I would only buy games from Target. Like if they had it at Target, I would buy it. I didn't even know they had stores for board games at that time. But I bought Chameleon and um, I was uh, a youth, director at the time at my church and I was I was like you know what I used to have the youth come to the house all the time and we would just like have these little parties and stuff like that and hang out and so um, I was always kind of like hey let, let's play some board games when they come over I had something to do um, and so we did uh, play the chameleon quite a few times and man it was a blast just trying to figure out who's lying so the way the game works it this one's a little more complicated to like explain and I haven't played in a while um, but I think that's just because I've played this so much I think this would probably be my number one played game of all time like I've played this more than anything I think but um, the way that it works is that you have a little grid it's like a four by four grid um, with uh, one two three four and ABCD on it 
and um, there's words in, in the grids. And so like inside the grid, though, there's a bunch of words and one of the, uh, you're gonna roll some dice and the dice will match up with a little code card that you have and it'll give you a secret word. And it'll, so like on your paper, it'll say, I rolled a five and a two. So you look up five, two, right here, the thing is B2. So then I'll find B and I'll find two. You don't do that in person. But then you'll look at B2, you'll find the word, and then you'll go, okay, so the secret word is potato. So now I have to think of a word that's associated with that, but I have to be careful because there's somebody whose code card just says they're the chameleon and they don't know what the secret word is at all. It kind of keeps you out of there. And one of the crazy parts is that you want to come up with a clue that'll make everybody go, oh, yeah, he kn I know he knows it, um, but if you say a clue like, for example, if it was potatoes and I said, mashed, immediately the chameleon can just look at the card and go, it's, it's potatoes. And then they can think of a word really quick and then it gets back to their turn and they're like, fries. And then everybody's like, okay, he, he said fries. He's clean, he's clear, right? And then somebody will say something dumb where they're just like, hmm, holes. And then everybody's like, holes? What, that's the weirdest clue. And so then, as the chameleon, you go, oh, that person said something dumb. Let me go ahead and try to blame it on them. I was like, what the heck is holes? Why would you even say that? And so at the end, everybody has to vote on who they think is the chameleon, and you guys get to, like, fight and argue with each other and just be like, listen, I said fries, okay? We all know that the secret word and that it matches up with fries. But holes? What were you thinking? Oh, well, yeah, well, holes, you know, they have holes in them, and you, you put them in a hole. Like, yeah, nah, nah, I don't, I don't. Or they'll say something like brown, and there's like a thousand brown things on the list, and they're like, I was trying not to be general. And then it's like, nah, you're the chameleon. So, dude, it is a blast. I, this is one of those games that I'm like, money back guarantee on me. Like, I would legitimately give you your money back, which, by the way, that doesn't, I'm not going to do that. But this is a great game, man. I love this game, and this is fun for the holidays. It's so much fun, especially if you have a family who's just alive and rowdy and just really likes that. No! say that that's you it's great man i love it chameleon one of my favorite games of all time but it is my number two because my number one I'm just gonna go ahead and whip it out what is just one and i know i'm basic i'm vanilla say what you want but i'm just gonna be honest with you just one never misses ever i have never ever taught this game to somebody and they didn't enjoy it. Not only that, everybody I've taught this game to immediately buys the game. They go on Amazon. They're like, what's this called? Just one? All right, I'll get it in two days. Like, <laughs> that's how it is. This game never misses. It's so, so good. There's only one downfall with this game. One. And it's a, it's a easy downfall to fix. The downfall with this game is that you never want to play it with less people. Playing this with three or four, horrible. Playing it with a max seven, phenomenal. That's that's the best player count is with seven people. You don't want to play this with anything less than that. It's weird. But just one is great, man. So if you do have to play with a smaller player count, let's say you do have like only four people in the house for your, for your get together, you can play it. Just give everybody two of the little things where you write your guesses on. Um, and then they can write two words. That's the way that you're supposed to play like with that variant. But it's not that great but yeah so it the way the game works is that everybody there's a secret word the person who's the guesser has the words facing away from them so everybody else can see and it's a list of one through five and they pick a number so they'll say three so you go to number three on the list and the word is chocolate and so then everybody has to write down the a word that has to do with chocolate kind of like the last one and um but you write that word down and then afterwards the person who's guessing will close their eyes Everybody will show their words to each other, and if any of the words match, you have to eliminate that, that tile from the game. You have to erase it, and now they get one less clue. But if there's two people, obviously, who match, you're eliminating two clues. And so with seven people, this can whittle down pretty quickly. One time, it, the, the secret word was Nintendo, and so everybody wrote two, or it was like five of us, and it was like two people wrote Mario, two people wrote Zelda, and I wrote Company. And so then the two Marios and the two Zeldas eliminated each other, and all that was left was company. And so I put company out there, and the person's like, company? And you can't say nothing. Like, you can't go think about it, or 
yeah, but think about me. You know what I mean? Like, I like to play, you know, like, you can't do any of that. So, she just, uh, Google? Nope, we got it wrong. And then we have to take the card out, and then um, you score based on how many times you get the answers right. Just one's perfect. Just perfect. Um... And I, I just, I love Just One, man. Just One is, is fantastic. It never misses. It's always great. It's super cheap. It's not expensive to buy. And it's just one of the greatest games ever. And um, if uh, you agree with that, put it down in the comment section. If you disagree, let me know. What's a better game, right? Like, there are so many games that I have yet to play. And um, I've, I've played a lot of games. And as you can tell, people are, I always say this. And, like, people get on me for this. Because I go, yeah, I'm relatively new to the hobby. And people just go... It's a lot of games for somebody who's new to the hobby. You're absolutely right. But I also have a really bad um, spending habit. Um, I can be a bit um, impulsive with my buying. So, um, yeah, I'm always on the search for, like, the best games, and I'm always on the lookout for great games and games that I want to play. And um, so I'm always open to what you guys have to say in the comment section. So put it down in the comment section. What's the best game that just never misses that you take to your family's house? So, anyways, thank you guys for checking out this list. Take care. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out memberships because that is the way we want to support this channel. We want to support this channel by members and not by uh, other stuff. So anyway, take care, guys. See you guys later. Peace out.